What's going on, everyone? I am the OP Jillicent, and I am here to talk about Season 3 of the WPL, and basically what we ended up drafting. Uh, just as a recap for Season 2, uh, we did go 4-0, I believe it was, but uh, all the coaches decided they wanted to restart the WPL in the Sun and Moon meta, since we pretty much just started that season, and not, a lot of people just wanted to restart it. So that's what our plan was, but uh, I don't want to keep this video too long, so let's just get right into our draft. Um, up first, I ended up grabbing Kieran Black right away. I actually franchised it, um, in case anyone's curious. Because last, last uh, season, it was my MVP. It was actually the MVP of the league. It went, I believe, 11-2. and two. And this thing is uh, really versatile. You can run a huge uh, number of attack with maybe like a substitute attacker. And um, you can run whatever. It gets coverage, uh, like a ton of it, like Ice Earth Power, Ice Beam. Dragon Claw, so uh, really hardening mod. It can even be run specs or band or even choice scarf. So really unpredictable, really versatile, and I'm really glad I managed to franchise it. Even though you know there was really no competition over franchising. Um, up next, uh, right and up for my first pick overall, I ended up scooping up Manaphy. Um, Manaphy, I saw Joey Pokie use it alongside Kieran Black, and it just pressures those dual ground type cores like Hippowdon and Landorus and Garchomp really effectively and um, this this is a really good leftover set it can be run tail glow rain, rain dance or just tail glow three attacks and once again this also gets a ton of coverage with ice beam scald I believe uh, surf although I will not be running surf uh, go ahead and watch UCL season one week 10 if you want to know about why I'm not running surf um, energy ball hidden power fire to hit Pharaoh if I need to do that and uh, Manaphy is one of those mons that if you can put holes into your opponent's team. This can pretty much clean up late game. It has decent bulk. You can run like one, you, you don't even have to run speed. You can run like a mixed bulky set, like 172, 84 maybe, and then maybe go with the plus special defense nature. And yeah, this is all the all, all around a really great mod and I'm really excited to see how it does this season alongside uh, Kieran Black Beatdown right here. I'm not naming it Beatdown, but still. Uh, next round, um, so basically, um, my first, all two, well, all two, both of my mega choices were um, taken by the time round three came around. And those mega choices were Mega Scizor and uh, I believe it was Mega. It was another Steel type. What's another Steel type, Mega? Um, what, was my, what was my second mega choice? Mega Scizor or Mega. Agron, Mega Agron, okay, yeah. I actually had that last season as well, but those are go gone, both gone. So instead of, instead of go focusing on my Dragon Steel Core right now, I'm going to focus on my Dragon Fairy Core. And uh, so here we have Mega Gardevoir, one of the hardest hitting mods. It gets access to a ton of utility like Will O Wisp, Taunt, Substitute, and then Calm Mind. And then if you can Calm Mind up once, Hyper Voice is going to be Okoing everything pretty much. It'll be doing, um, like, it does like 80% to Cresselia. And yeah, it's kind of crazy if you just run um, modest. Look at look at the special attack stat. <laughs> it's, uh, it gets through the roof. But uh, I couldn't pass up on Mega Gardevoir because if Mega Gardevoir is gone, as you guys can see, there were not really many Megas that I really wanted left. I probably would have scooped up like Mega Audino, possibly Mega Pinsir, maybe Mega Altaria. That would be that would have been a cool one. But yeah, I'm really glad I managed to get this mod, um, and I'm really also excited to see how it performs in the season. I actually already had my week one match. I'm not going to spoil everything, but um, I'm going to say, I'll tell you, I did bring Gardevoir to that match. Uh, next up, we have our um, Entei. Uh, I know, I'm going to shout out Pokemon. Pokemon. Okay. Uh, this spring, uh, it gets, uh, once again, coverage. Um, it gets Iron Head to hit Diancy. It gets, I believe, Sacred Fire for Choice Band. And honestly, I haven't seen. Um, Special with Sunny Day Eruption do work at Solar Beam, so do not doubt this Ente. It puts in a ton of work. No, barely anything switches into Choice Banded Sacred Fire. Not even physical attackers with like Mega Swampert because they don't want to risk the burn. So I expect Ente to do a ton of work this season. And let's move on. Uh, we have Heracross. Um, once again, a really unpredictable mod. It can be run Choice Band, Choice Scarf. Um, and it gets, uh, I believe, Guts and Moxie, so you can run Scarf Moxie with, like, Close Combat and Megahorn. Um, I don't know how reliable Megahorn is, 
Uh, once again, I'm going to shout out on another match. UCL! Season 1, Week 5, A-Drive vs. Christian. Go watch that. But yeah, Scarf, Close Combat. Uh, this can really clean up late game, especially with the Moxie boosts if I really wanted to, but... I don't want to talk about this because I'm really actually excited to talk about my next pick, which is Flygon. So, um, if you guys don't know, Flygon is tier 3 now for a very good reason. It gets Dragon Dance. Uh, is Dragon Dance here? Well, it, um, I'm, I think I'm an Oros. Shoot. There we go. Gets a Dragon Dance. It's not illegal. And then we get, we can run Dragon Claw with like maybe a Life Orb set. And then we can run like Earthquake and Fire Punch, whatever we need, I believe. It even gets Special, it gets Crunch. It gets Dragon Tail if I want to run a bulky set. I don't know how much I'll do that, but yeah, I'm um, really excited to use this. I can even use Outrage to clean up late game, and it doesn't have to be Dragon Dance. So I can run like Scarf Outrage and not have to set it up to clean up late game. So, really excited to see how Flygon does this season. And these are pretty much my high tier picks. Like, this is tier one, this is tier one, this is a tier one mega, this is tier two, this is tier three, and this is tier three. So, the only other high tier pick I could get was a tier three for my free points. And as, I, as you guys are going to see, that is actually Lycanroc Midday. So, this is my Sun and Moon Pokemon of choice. We could draft as much as many of them as we wanted, but I really only wanted Lycanroc. Because at this point, if you look at any of the other six Pokemon, I have no Stealth Rocker, or actually I do have a Defogger, but I have no Hazards. So, Lycanroc provides a fast hazard or Hazard Setter, I guess I should say. Uh, base 112 speed, not bad. I can run like... SD Stealth Rock and really put in some work, maybe Earthquake, I don't know if it gets Earthquake, and then Stone Edge. This can do a ton of work, maybe Life Orb, or Sa I can even run a Sash Lee if I wanted to. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see how this does, just like all of my Pokemon, but uh, once again, another Rock type, right on. Look at this attack stat. This thing is tier 5, and it, can be, and it gets access to Swords Dance and Rock Polish. Um, if a uh, team does not come prepared for Rhydon, it can definitely clean up late game. I mean, if you're looking at this attack, I mean, speed stat, at plus 2, you're hitting, like, like some base 80 level 100s, I think. But, um, yeah, you can run double dance with life orb, but quick stone edge usually covers everything that you need to. And um, I'm expecting to ride for Rhydon to get at least one sweep this season. Um, I don't know how much I can do it. Speaking of Stealth Rockers, I believe this also gets Stealth Rock, as it does, yes. I don't think it gets a Rapid Spin. No, it doesn't, but uh, we actually have two Hazard Setters now, so that's looking good. Um, coming to the next round, I decided to grab Bravery Yari. Um, I've always had a really solid, fast Electric type in past seasons. In Season 2, I had Jolteon, and in Season 1, I think it was Heliolisk, or it was probably Jolteon still, but um, this time, I, didn't, I already used up a lot of my picks, so I have to go with a lower tier fast Electric type, but... I wouldn't underestimate Zip Strike up. If you run like max speed modest specs, it's gonna be hitting really hard, like almost as hard as like Life Orb Raikou. So um, I believe this gets sub, but it can even be like an agility late game sweeper if you wanted to. I don't know if it gets calm mind, it doesn't, but um, yeah, that's that. Uh, you could even run dual screens. Uh, I don't know how good its attack stat is. Its attack stat is actually better, so let's get rid of that and let's run Toy Spand. <laughs> You can run like Volt Switch, Wild Charge, that kind of coverage. I believe you can get to Flame Charge if you want to sweep even more. So um, I don't expect a Substracker to do too much work considering it's not the best fast electric type, but I may bring it to one or two games where my opponent has like Suicune and I have nothing for Suicune. So uh, yeah, hopefully Substracker can do at least a little work. And next we have Gorgeist. And uh, this Pokemon I picked up because I saw. Who was it that used it in the UCL? I think it was Miguel, who had it in the UCL, and it is a really good wall. I was actually thinking about grabbing Trevenant instead of it, but um, Trevenant, I believe, is actually tier 4, and Gorgeist is tier 5, so uh, Gorgeist it is, um, really good defense stat. I can run, like, once again, mixed defenses, I believe 84 here, and then 172, and then increase the special defense, I believe, is to make them even. Yeah, so pretty good defenses, um, really good, um, actually decent attack stat now that I look at it, but I believe most of its coverage is actually spe special with Shadow Ball and Fire Blast and Energy Ball, yeah, so uh, looking for this to do work, you would normally run like Leftovers or Rocky Helmet, and this Pokemon, it doesn't ch like check a lot of those f offensive fire types like Victini or 
um, ice, ice types like Kieran Black on my draft or Weavile, but it definitely hard walls a lot of Pokemon such as, I don't know, let's see what Gorgeist can wall on my, on this. Hmm. Zygarde? Does, 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 does Gorgas care about Zygarde? I don't believe it does. Mance? Uh, catch this Will-O-Wisp, please. Will-O-Wisp, yeah. Um, what else? It doesn't appreciate Chinchino? Do you think Chinchino or Mega, Air <laughs> Mega Aerodactyl? Okay, never mind. But Chinchino, do you think that cares about Gorgast? I don't believe so. So, Gorgast, uh, my second to last pick. And then at this point, I had a Tier 4. And looking at my team, I still wanted more hazard control. I had... No flying type, I believe, no. So I decided to pick up Braviari. Now uh, this can be run as like a Scarf Defogger if I want fast hazard removal. It can be run Banded and Choice Banded, I believe, Sheer Force. Uh, Brave Birds, nothing wants to take these hits if they're already like at 80%, so. Yeah, you can run that with like Mixed Bulk if you want it to. Or if I want it to, I guess. 172 and then 84, so. That's gonna round out the roster. Once again, we have um, Karen Black, Manaphy, Mega Gardevoir, Entei, Heracross, Flygon, Rhydon, Lycanroc, Zipstrika, Gorgeist, and Braviary drafted in that order. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh, team does. I'm hoping Karen Black can be the MVP of the season again. Uh, let me know how, what, you, how you, what you think of the draft and how well you think we can do in the season with it. And I will see you next time. We actually have our week one match going up this Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Bye.